So since I think it'll be what a lot of people take from this video ultimately, I'm just going to come right out and say it. Yes, Guitar Hero 2 Deluxe 2.0 is not far in the pipeline, my friends. We've been working on it behind the scenes. It's turning out really fantastic. There's a ton of absolutely mind-blowing features. It makes 1.0 look downright conservative. But that's not what this video is about. DX was simply the catalyst for what I'm about to introduce. And I, I guess it's a little bit of a stopgap because I intended to have other discs coming out in the interim. I decided to hold off until DX 2.0 was properly finished so that way I could just take all the features that I wanted from it and not have to worry about, oh, there's gonna be a new feature, time to re-release the disc. Volume zero already has to be re-released because of bug fixes and all that good stuff. So internally, Harmonix built this feature into Guitar Hero 2 called Conditionals, which uh, they pretty much only use to determine if the, what the, the version of the game that's running is a shipping build as opposed to a debug build. But JNAC had the pretty big-brained idea that he could simply use multiple executables and change out the set list, a whole ton of the game's art, features, you could enable them or disable them depending on which version of the game was running. So for example, we could have Guitar Hero 80s with Guitar Hero 2 Deluxe and you'd simply pick which one you wanted to play at startup and it would be basically like running two different discs and they're both running off the same arc and it's pretty ingenious. And that posed kind of a problem because we would therefore have to look for executable loaders that we could package onto the disc and have you know, you turn your PS2 on, and then you get to the loader, and that's the first thing you see, and then you get into the game. So we, it required a, a different kind of workflow. So we started looking into loaders, and the one that people usually recommend as far as homebrew goes at this point is, is called you Launch Elf, because PS2 executables are literally called elf files, yes. And eh, it kind of looks like shit, not gonna lie. I mean, it's all right, the, the text mode thing is, is all right, and before anyone says, well, you can skin it, unfortunately, we weren't able to get the skinning working because JPEG support is utterly broken in the current build, so that was nice. And then I realized something, demo discs. Now, if you follow my channel, you, you're probably aware that I'm a big fan of demo discs. One of the last streams I did was on demo discs. And I thought, well, demo discs are basically just executable launchers, aren't they? With a, with a nice menu and all that. But at their core, they'd be able to load the different versions of Deluxe that we we need to load. And my digging through all this got Scott thinking, local age, and he remembered something that we'd never heard of called uh, the Ultimate Sony Multiloader, which comes in a couple different flavors. But the gist of it is that back in the day, uh, because different regions would get their own demo discs, Sony of Germany was putting out the ones for Germany, and uh, they were pretty careless and left the, the tools needed to actually build the demo disc on the demo disc for anybody to use. So this became uh, the ultimate Sony multiloader because we could now hijack a demo disc and take its nice menu, but use it for homebrew or use it for whatever else you would need to load executables on your PS2 for. And I'm guessing that the English speaking world just does not have a use for it really, and never did. Because if you look it up now, a lot of what you get are YouTube channels and websites that are in Russian or they're in Portuguese. Obviously that requires me in the English speaking world to use a translator app. Um, finally getting to the point here, it made me realize, what else could I use a disc like this for? Because the, the customizability of the Ultimate Sony Multiloader is insane. It's not just the kind of thing where like, oh, there's three menus hard-coded and that's all you can change. No, you can change the soundtrack, you can change the colors, the entire structure of the menu, menu depth. So if you want to have six menus all cascading in each other, you can. Uh, you could change the flavor text at startup, the demo loading text, the credits, and of course what it tries to boot. Uh, pretty much the only thing that we can't change is the intro video, and we're still looking into that. I don't know what's going on, but every single time we've tried to change it, the disc just does not boot. I don't get that, that's weird. That got me thinking. Demo discs. Well, Guitar Hero has a lot of demos, right? Um, but they're a little bit kind of cumbersome because you have to juggle a bunch of different ISOs because they're all scattered about. So you have the OPM demo, which is on one disc. You have the retail demo, which is on one disc. You have the GH1 and GH80's Deluge builds, which are both on separate discs. And it, for just people who want to play like some unfinished charts, that's a little much. So. I was prompted to put together this Guitar Hero demo pack, finally getting to it. So you're getting four games on here. Two builds of Guitar Hero 2, OPM and Retail. You're getting 
uh, Guitar Hero 1 and Guitar Hero 80's Deluge, and I've also thrown in an OPM featurette from 111 on Guitar Hero 2's development, which I think is an absolutely fascinating watch. Uh, so as far as editing these demos to make them work, I, I tried to keep everything as raw and stock as possible, but anything that went unused that was taking up a significant amount of space, because obviously space is a concern with so many games on a single disc. So I was thinking of like, all right, well, what can I strip out necessarily? So anything that was uh, unused, any unused audio got stripped out. All of the VGS audio got downsampled. Thankfully, that was pretty much it. I don't think you'll really notice it while you're playing. Beyond that, a lot of what I did was basically just re-enabling access to cut content or unfinished content uh, menus and things like practice and OPM or unlock all in the retail demo. Uh, there's a full change log that you can get with the download that'll tell you pretty much everything I did in case you're curious about it. I'm finally throwing it up. I've had it finished for a couple days now and I was just way too lazy to make this video. So here you go. Have fun. And uh, don't think I'm done with these launchers just yet. I, I'm hoping in the next couple of days to have uh, a, a full write-up on my blog about all their various quirks and idiosyncrasies if you're looking to use it for your own disc. Uh, and also, I, I do have some other ideas for demo packs and things that I'd like to put together. But that's all I got for you for right now. So, links in the description as always. Thanks, guys.